Like the Hebrews, they believed you could commit adultery with your eyes. And secular education was in the hands of the priests, right? Because Yahweh Shai said, when you look at a woman and you wish to lay, lie with her, a woman that's married, you have already committed adultery in your mind. You know, so, and that's another topic because you had um, Yahweh Shai who, who actually came to America. Uh, the Aztecs and Mayas, they called them Quetzalcoatl. You know, and like I said, Lord's will, I do a lesson on that too. You know, I did one a, a while back, a couple of years ago. But uh, I have, you know, new information. But, you know. So, that was it. Yeah, that was it on this book. Uh, I'm going to go into another book right now. Okay, this book is called Across Before Columbus. Evidence for Transoceanic Contact with America's Prior to 1492. Okay, edited by Donald Y. Gilmore and Linda S. McElroy. Okay. Let's go to page two, 274. Okay. Here is a figure. I'm going to read the caption. It says, uh, This stone stella from Tepatl, Axo, Veracruz, Mexico, is in the National Anthropological Museum in Mexico City. And it's going to break it down here. All right. A stella from Tepatl, Axo, Veracruz, is dated by my archaeologist 100 to 300 AD. It is on permanent display at the National Anthropological Museum in Mexico City. It portrays in relief a Mayan dignitary wearing phylact phylacteries like those still worn during morning prayers on weekdays by Orthodox Jewish men. They are called Teflon in Hebrew. Okay. And uh, 275, right, it says in New Mexico, in New Mexico is a site in the Bellin district that visitors have for several generations been reaching from the town of Las Lunas, which is located about 30 miles south of Albu Albuquerque. The artifact that has attracted the visitors is a large heavy inscribed rock in the old Phoenician Hebrew script containing an abridged version of the Ten Commandments. Alright, and you can type it in Las Lunas Stone, New Mexico Stone, alright, and you'll uh, see the image in Google. It says uh, the authenticity of the inscription is indicated by all criteria. The 5 by 6 foot stone slab is part of the mountainside. Both the Indians and the white people of the locality say it was always there. An outstanding archaeologist who does not wish to be named assured me that he had seen on nearby Taylor Mountain text in the same script. Alright. And now uh, that was a point for this book. Uh, yeah. This is called right here, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by Ronald Sanders, The Origins of American Racism. Alright, let's go to page uh, 187. Okay. It says, For with increasing frequency and conviction, Duran came to see elements of a Judaic character in the old Aztec religion. At first, this tendency appears only as a fervent search but for Jewish analogies provoked by Aztec customs such as the eating of only unleavened bread on certain days of the year, the prohibition of drinking liquids after the eating of of certain ritual foods and the use of baths for purifications. In time, this begins to seem to Duran like overwhelming evidence that the Indians are indeed descended from the lost tribes of Israel. All right, um, I want to hit up uh, 
with the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter uh, Hosea 8 8 verse 11 all the way down it says because Ephraim which Ephraim is the head uh, head of the northern kingdom so it represents all of the ten tribes it says because Ephraim hath made many altars to sin altars shall be unto him to sin the altars that sin those temples man on those temples, you watch that movie uh, Apocalypto with Mel Gibson, or made by Mel Gibson, whatever. Um, yeah, he they show in that movie that on those temples, on those altars, what they do, they sacrifice humans. You know, they 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 they, uh, they cut the heart of the living man out. You know, and they, they had it while it's still beating. So those are sin, uh, altars of sin, man. I've written him, I've written to him the great things of my law, but they were but they were counted as a strange thing. They sacrificed flesh for the sacrifice of mine offering. So instead of sacrificing the Most High, you know, they thought that they had to appease the Most High by killing people and beating, taking out their heart and sacrificing people, you know? So, so they sacrificed flesh for the sacrifice of mine offerings and eat it, but the Lord accepted them not. not now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt, which is America. For Israel hath forgotten his maker and built his temples, right? Those temples are those altars, those those pyramids. And Judah hath multiplied fenced cities, but I will send the fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the palaces thereof. All right. Um, and the final book is uh, the Aztecs. Uh, the history of the Indies of New Spain by Fray Diego Duran, which we read in that other book, uh, Lost Tribes and Promised Land. All right. So I'm gonna read the introduction too, just to show you a little in info. So it says, a book written by a Dominican friar, a kinsman of mine, which was the most exact account based on ancient records that I have ever seen writes the scholar Juan de Tovar in his famous letter to Father Jose de, de Acosto uh, in reference to Fray Diego de Rand's historia. This letter is undated but must have been written between 1586 and 1588. It says Toyar was related to de Rand and undoubtedly was the Jesuit most versed in things about the Indians okay so this is page one or well, page three Salakia chapter one I'm gonna read here it says because of their nature we could almost affirm that they were Jews and Hebrew people and I believe and this is Fray Diego Duran a Spaniard one of the first to um, be among the Indians of Mexico and I believe that I would not be committing a great error if I were to state this fact, considering their way of life, their ceremonies, their rites and superstitions, their omens, and their false dealings, so related to and characteristic of those of the Jews. It says, because of all these things, my suspicions are confirmed that these natives are part of the ten tribes of Israel, which Salmanezar, king of the Assyrians, captured and took to Assyria in the time of Hosea, king of Israel, and in the time of Ezekiel, king of Jerusalem, as can be read in the fourth book of Kings, chapter 18, that this remote, that this, Slakia, uh, that this remote and distant country had ever, had never been inhabited before, there was a long and tedious journey of a year and a half. Now he's, he's referring to the book of Second Ezra, the thirteenth chapter and the fortieth verse on down, because that's what it explains. All right, because when the ten tribes, the northern kingdoms, Samaria got taken down and led into Assyria by Shalmaneser, 
they took counsel and then they came over here to the Americas. The journey was a year and a half. You can read that in Second Ezra, the ch 13th chapter and the 40th verse on down. All right, of a year and a half to the region where today are found these people of the islands and the mainland toward the west beyond the seas. Okay. It says, the Indians have traditions regarding a great man who, after suffering many afflictions and persecutions on the part of his countrymen, gathered the multitude of his followers and persuaded them to flee from that persecution to a land where they could live in peace. Having made himself leader of those people, he went to the seashore and moved the water with a rod that he, uh, that he carried in his hand. Then the sea opened and he and his followers went through. And the enemies, seeing this opening made, went behind him, but the waters returned to their place, and the pursuers were never heard of again. What clearer proof need we than these we that these people were Jews than the story of the flight from Egypt, wherein Moses moved the waters with his rod, the sea opened, a path appeared, and after Pharaoh followed with his army god returned the sea to its place all the enemy being then drowned in the deep if the previous account were not convincing enough i should like to tell you about another event that the indians claim happened on their long migration which is that was exodus all right it says while they were camped by some hills a frightful earthquake occurred the earth opened and swallowed certain evil men an occurrence which filled the other people with dread having seen the painting of this event i was reminded of the book of numbers where it was told how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up korah and dathan and abiran all right and uh that was the point all right so i hope your brothers were edified you know you know agents are gonna be out there anyway it don't matter you know what info this is just this is just for the further pushing of the gospel and edification so you know, I give uh, I like to give all praises, of course, and thanks and glory to Yahweh Bashem Shai for letting me bring out this truth and sincerity. You know, uh, double honors to the elders, Great Millstone. You know, for giving us this, you know, you know, showing us this truth. You know, and uh, shalom and honors to the elect, pushing this truth. All right, uh, shalom.